Sorry? Can you hear from me? Yes. They can all hear you. But I can't let you watch this movie. It's a horror movie. I like watching. I'm not scared of it. But you can't. People die. And then I just turn around like that. Yeah, but a lot of people are going to die. It's okay. I can't let you watch this. <laughs> Hello there. Welcome back to Noob Reviews today, guys. It's your boy, Ellie Moses, your 21-year-old law and film student from Sydney, Australia, as well as your noob. He reviews classics I've never seen before and give you the perspective from a 21-year-old law and film student here from Sydney, Australia. Today, going back to my horror roots and continuing my journey with horror films, watching Halloween for the first time. This is going to be an interesting one. I've made a tactical decision today uh, of wearing a beanie. Um, I never wear a beanie, but as I said, it's a tactical decision because you know, if I ever get scared, just pull the flaps down and over. Great tactical decision. And yeah, um, I actually own this on Blu-ray, but for the purposes of recording, I'm doing this. Every time, man, I watch it on Amazon Prime, it's just like, I have to record it, right? Even though I own it, I just watch it on Amazon Prime for the person. It's like me sending super chats to Amazon Prime every time. It's like $5 here and there renting a movie. $5 there, $5 there. I'm giving super chats to Amazon Prime. <laughs> it's just like far out, man. <laughs> Give me more Prime benefits. Why aren't these movies available on Prime? It's so annoying. It's just like I got to rent them all the time. Like all the ones I want to watch, I got to rent them. And as I said before, super chats to Amazon. But yeah. Oh, this is going to be an interesting one today, man. Watching Halloween for the first time. Change the format a bit. Putting my camera at the bottom of the screen. Give you the full screen of the movie. And yes, got a little guest today. Um, Sarah, my little cousin. And she's not going to be in this. Because I'm not going to let her watch people die. You don't want to watch people dying, yeah, Sarah? Yeah. i got to deal with this. i got to get out. I can't let her watch Halloween. If I'm going to suffer... I can't let my little cousin suffer. I can't let him scarred. Can't leave him scarred at this young age. So, yeah. Um, there she is. Yeah. So, I've got to deal with this. Let's get right into the action while I get rid of this one. <laughs> but, yeah. Let's begin with new reviews. This is episode 11 with Halloween. And it's going to cut... <laughs> I'm trying to record, man. All right. You know what? I'm going to stop. I'm gonna do a quick edit and then we'll start the movie so soon. I'm just gonna let her watch the start, the opening credits, and then I'm gonna kick her out of my room. Is that you? Can you speak to your friend? No, they're people watching on YouTube. They're my friends, but I can't speak to them now. I speak to them later when they watch the video. Okay? But I'm only gonna let you watch a little bit. Okay. Because when the scary stuff happens, you can't be here. Yeah, but it's going to be scary for the whole time. I don't care. No. I don't want to watch this boring ending. See, I don't like watching it. See. Hi! <laughs> See, this is just a quick opinion. Like, this is where I feel modern horror films fail. Like, already from the start of this film, you already get that sense of tension and just already from the beginning. Like, the music cuts out a little bit and then you already have that little score start to settle in. Um, and already switching to the perspective from the killer. That's already something unique and we don't see that. Like, I don't watch horror films, like, much. I'm starting to get into it or trying to get out of my comfort zone. But we see today probably a modern horror film would have stuck with the couple and then probably went to them upstairs doing their thing and then they would have got killed but this time we see john carpenter adding his own spin we see the perspective of the killer we just saw um getting the knife and then going upstairs just that switch that's that one little switch that makes it unique already from the beginning from the onset i'm getting that sense of tension and straight away we get the point of view 
from the killer, which is something we don't usually get. Usually you're just waiting for the horror couple to do something and just waiting for them to get murdered, but yeah. Daddy's scaring you. Now watch the movie, please, Sarah. You gotta go. I wanna watch. I'll be out soon. No, I, I wanna watch. No, no. Just leave for leave. What makes this authentic as well is the handheld camera work as well, which is absolutely fantastic. They could have easily like rigged it or used the still shot or anything, but the fact that it's handheld or probably like something stripped to his chest, it just makes it even better. Like even the stuttering of the stairs, trying to be quiet, tiptoeing, it just makes it look all authentic and real, like he's actually doing it. See, even those little subtle details are like putting the mask on, like, what the heck? Hey, yo! It's a little kid the whole time? What a way to like completely like I I don't like using this term but subvert expectations like straight off the bat you have the zoom out and the perfect editing of taking off the camera or taking off the mask with his father I'm guessing it's his father and it's a little kid holding the knife you're just like you're just shocked at that like what the heck is a little kid this whole time? Oh, oh, I am in for a ride. I am in for a ride. This whole, like, just like those subtle techniques as well. The whole time, you're thinking, all right, it's a murder. It's going to be some older dude, probably, probably late teens, early, like, I don't know, 20s, 30s, whatever. It could be some old creepy guy. It's a guy just maneuvering his way through the house, like the, the mannerisms as well. He's tiptoeing, he's being quiet. And then in the end, it ends up being li this little kid. And that's why probably the guy um, neglected him. Like her boyfriend, I'm guessing, neglected him because this is the little kid. It's Michael. It's a little brother in the house. And it ends up being this little kid. Like, what a way off the bat to like... Wow, wow. <laughs> we have victory! <laughs> okay. Finally got a rid of little Sarah. I'm sorry if you guys are watching this. I'm gonna probably put this in the edit. It's cute, like, but she like I can't let her watch this stuff. Not now, not now. I know I my dad. I watched Jaws at four years old, and she's older than four. But like, no, 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 not now. Like, I'm not gonna risk that with her parents. Not get, with my auntie and uncle not giving me permission. No, not now. <laughs> not now. If I saw that, I'd run them over on sight. Oh my gosh! Oh! 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 oh. <sighs> that came out of nowhere. Oh. oh my gosh, man. My heart. My little cousins are laughing. Oh. Like, okay, okay. Film school, Elyon. Film school. It's like, I'm gonna talk my bull crap now. Thinking cap on, like, film cap on. Like, Straight away, off the beginning, I really, like, just off the bat, natural lighting from the car, just to, like, subtly light up those figures in the dark. Obviously, you got the storm setting, driving in the middle of nowhere, the atmosphere of the storm, using no score, it's just the storm sound effects doing the work. And, like, I, I got a little stage fright, or, like, from just one of the storm sound effects, and that's already off the bat, I'm just, like, getting scared of it. I don't know if that's me being a wuss, or that's, like, credit to John Carpenter. I'm gonna give credit to John Carpenter and me being a wuss as well. But like, absolutely, like, just creating that tension just from their driving the car. Like, I knew something was going to happen. But like, the way they build it up, it's not just using the score to build it up as well. Like, we see most films now. It's just like, you see the tension or like, the score being amped up. And then you're just waiting for the jump scare. This one just like, literally came out of nowhere. I was just like, you're, they're just driving. You think they're safe. And it's just like, ah, that guy freaked me out, man. And if I'm getting freaked out by that, I'm in for a ride.
did I notice something there? Like, you know how it was really quiet when she went up? Did you hear, like, subtle breathing? I think I heard subtle breathing. Like, just down to the sound editing as well. Like, I think I heard subtle breathing. I don't know that... I, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. But I think, like, when there was, like, the reverse view from inside the door, I think I heard subtle breathing. And I was just like... I was like, oh, crap. There's someone watching her. It's just like... There's, like, so many ways and techniques already John Carpenter is using that are just not, like, your stereotypical, like, usual, um, like, cookie-cutter horror techniques you'd see today. Even though I don't, like, haven't watched many, but I can just see it from the trailers of some horror films today. You already see those, like, the same techniques over and over and over again. And even, like, to the point where the jump scare sounds, you know how you have the build-up? I feel like every horror movie or, like, all these horror films you get rehashed, they use the same stock footage sound effect um, with the jump scares and the build up to them. And then when the sound, when the jump scare happens, it's like the same screech sound. I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like you get that. But like, great technique they use with the sound editing with the subtle breathing and then the reverse on the camera. I was like, yeah, great. <laughs> Bro, they hit you when you least expect it, man. Oh my gosh. And look at the framing. Not showing his face. <laughs> Following the kid as well. Oh my gosh. Like, you, it's hitting you when you... Oh shit. I'm not expecting these jump scares. It's not your usual, like, creepy in a horror film, like, oh, in a dark, secluded room. And just a jump scare. This is like live in real life in a schoolyard where you least expect it. Like horror in the most public location. Oh, what the heck? Oh damn. And like I've noticed with the camera shots as well. There's a lot of still shots that turn to like tracking shots. And there's a lot of like like a lot of shots as well where the camera is held for a while. Like. Uh, Carpenter would hold the camera just for that extra split second and I feel like that's working really well and look at it a lot of one take shots fantastic I'm a big fan of one take shots and there's very few cuts so far look at that like crazy all in one go just establishing the scene that this guy is like already commanding the whole area that kid is scarred for life as well the one he just interacted with like, not even showing the face. Like, it's like the shark in Jaws. Not showing it for, like, the first 40 minutes. But you're establishing that sense of horror. That you haven't even shown the mask. You've already shown it from a distance through the shutters and everything. And then, of that kid being scared to death from the get-go. Like, I haven't even showed it yet. Wow. <laughs> I know I'm probably complimenting this too much. But I can't stop talking. I'm just, like, appreciating this. It's like, this is crazy. I can't even eat in peace. <laughs> but it's already been established that, like, through the few things that Michael's been, oh, I think Michael Myers has been watching her through, or like the certain behaviors, or like the locations he's been watching her through, like the shutters, the bush, the car. Now he's got her on all angles. Now you're just like wondering where else can he be watching her from? Like, look. Even the mannerisms of her, like the directing and everything, she's constantly looking out on the awareness. She's being aware now. Maxi? Well? See, I think it's Lori. Now, Lori, Lori is given no time to breathe, but so is the audience. Like, me as the viewer, I'm given no time to breathe now. There is no room for rest or relaxation throughout this movie. Like, you're straight onto the point. And I'm just constantly tense now at the moment, like Laurie is, and that's reflecting back on me. Like, I think that's like really well done. Now the whole family is here. <laughs> now you coming for barbecue? Uh, no. We just stayed before. One hour. Hmm? We just stayed. Wait. 
Liz, thank you for letting me out, Courtney. Hi, my goodness! Hi, Courtney! <laughs> You're all gonna be in the video. I don't care, I'm putting it. I don't okay. care. Just tell him that's what have you paused it? Yeah, oh, I've paused, like, not my recording, but I paused the movie. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> You're oh, gonna be sorry. out. You're all in it. I don't care, I'm putting it on. You're gonna hear, oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this I watched is the video. weirdest new reviews I've done, but it's the best one. Huh? Like, look at that. Just holding the camera there. Just holding it. And it's handheld. And look at how it moves in one take. It's fantastic. And it's just like maneuvering with him, how it's directed as well. They're all doing all this in one shot. So it's really thought out and well planned. That I love this. It's like, this is like what I want to do if hopefully I manage to get up and make films in the future. I love this technique of like one shot stills and then moving a camera as he goes well. And just like planning out the scene you could tell there's a lot of planning out each of these scenes because there's very few cuts there is very few cuts only cuts when it needs to be oh my gosh man Michael Myers is making more little Michael Myers. He's setting him up for the future. He's traumatizing all these kids. Oh, an RKO! <laughs> Out of nowhere! <laughs> Wow, really subtle, John Carpenter. Really subtle. <laughs> really subtle. The boogeyman. I saw him outside. There was nobody outside. There was. You know what Carpenter has done? He set up this. The way he set up the film and the way he set up certain shots with Michael Myers has got me watching every inch of the screen, every scene. Like. The backgrounds, I'm constantly watching the curtains for him to pop up or everything. Like, if there's a wide take of the whole town, I'm watching anything in the background as well, as well as the main characters. Like, he's got me watching everything now. I'm just, like, watching all angles for him to pop up. Like, this scene now, where is he? Like, I'm watching everything for little subtle hints and movements of Michael Myers. Like, it's really well done. <laughs> Oh! Hey man, don't worry, it's just the boogeyman doing his things. It's alright, it's alright. She's just drunk, passed out. I heard the breathing for a sec, so I thought it was—I thought it was done. Oh my gosh! I never knew breathing could be the most scariest sound effect in the film. What? Why does no one close their doors? I'm thinking of Smooth Criminal from Michael Jackson. Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? No, she's not. <laughs> Annie's not okay. See? They could have easily cut to Michael Myers just being there, but no. Carpenter's like, nah, we're gonna get this all in one shot with a zoom out. Just like, simple. Simple yet effective. Love it. <laughs> Come on, man, let my man finish! The thing is, it's already been established he knows in the house, so it's just like, 
There we go. The toying begins. I feel bad for my guy because it's just the girls he was after. Like, they're the ones that talk crap to him. And now the guy's gonna suffer for it, for just rocking up. My guy rocked up to slay, and he's gonna get slayed. <laughs> I'm okay, you're not. <laughs> Wait, how strong is that knife? He's just there looking at his artwork. He's like, yeah, that's some good art. I'm happy with what I did. <laughs> I painted my canvas. <laughs> you have got to be joking. That was her scream, not mine. That was her scream, not mine. <laughs> Bro, my guy has planned this out. He is one smart motherfucker. <laughs> Walk through the door, just hurry up and walk. Oh my. Okay, that's the typical horror movie thing where they just trip over nothing. <laughs> Why, man? Just run. My man can only walk. From the Undertaker, man. You can't take the Undertaker's moves. <laughs> At this moment, he knew. He thought. <laughs> she can tell by his reaction that <laughs> he ain't dead, fam. He's gone. She's like, ah, oh, I gotta put up with this shit. <laughs> You can just hear the breathing now. I love that technique. And it's just quick cutting between different locations. You don't know where he is. I think that's what it's trying to imply. Like, he's everywhere. Wow. Nice, ambiguous ending, I guess. That was... Wow. I'm just going to give my quick thoughts. Like, I think I paused a lot throughout or gave my, like, my comments a lot throughout the film in general. Um, so like, I was really appreciative of the technical aspect of this film. I absolutely love the technical aspect. The characters, um, you're not given much backstory to them. Obviously, they're not like fully developed characters. Um, I'm not sure if I cared much for them. Like, um, I cared much more for the little kids and their well-being. But, um, I like how there's not too many characters in this film. It's not over bloated. It's not just a slaughterhouse like a bunch of throwaway characters. It's just like, you're established that these three girls, um, and you're, at the beginning, it's established that this guy comes from this, like, psych ward. Um, and you have the two different arcs with, the, like, the three girls. And then you have the investigative side with this investigative um, individual. Uh, I can't remember his name. Um, but then that just interchanges between them and the little girls. And then you find out... Um, these guys, they're not going to stop talking my little cousins. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I did enjoy, as I said, I appreciated the technical aspect, like, so much in this film. There's so many fantastic, like, techniques utilized. Some of them are just simple, like, simple camera usage. It's not overly complicated, but it works so well to create this tension and this, like, environment of just, like, I'm constantly on the edge of my seat just like wondering where this guy is, where he is, what he's gonna do. Um, and I love like the ambiguity of the character. Like I want to watch a second film now. I want to like know more about this Michael Myers. There's so much left, like left to be desired about him. Um, but like the characters in terms of like, uh, I think it's Laurie, Jamie Lee Curtis's character. 
Um, her performance is her performance was fine. Um, I thought her performance was just good uh, towards the end, but um, the ending of the film, uh, that little period where it was just Laurie and Michael Myers left, it was just that one on one standoff. I found it to be a bit goofy. And just a lot of like the weird character choices and decisions, like some of my reactions you would have seen. Um, like I was going to, like if you guys don't know how my ranking system works, my ranking system is based on Star Wars. So it goes Grandmaster, Jedi Master, Jedi Knight, um, Padawan, Youngling, then Trash Compactor. And I was going to I was set on giving this film a Jedi Master. I was like really loving it. Like this the atmosphere it created, the techniques were like the camera, like the technical perspective was absolutely fantastic. Even the score, the sound design, the utilization of sound was fantastic. Even with the breathing, um, but then just the, at the end, I think it was just a bit too. I don't know. I felt like it just dumbed down a little bit. It became just a lot of typical horror movie tropes, you know, just falling um, over nothing. Um, a character that's walking, uh, like you could have made so many other different decisions. And yeah, just like not even watching him while he's dead, uh, just waiting for someone, like not going with the kids to call the police, like something's happened. But yeah, I just thought it really dumbed it down that last, like that last five or ten minutes. And I really thought the pacing was really well done in this film. Like it's just only ninety minutes. Like it flew by. It gets straight to the point. Um, it's all it all takes place in one day, I believe, like day of Halloween. Um, but yeah, I really think the ending just dumbed it down a little bit that last five or ten minutes and it's obviously sequel bait um the ending as he like goes away and it's just like you see the reactions of her and the detective like oh crap he got away um but yeah just because of the ending the last five or ten minutes guys i'm going to give halloween the rank of jedi knight yes i thoroughly enjoyed it really was a, like loving the technical aspect of this film um the story and characters uh, the characters are a bit eh, just throwaway teenagers. But, um, like, I love some of uh, the technical. You saw I was appreciating it throughout. But as always, guys, it's been your boy, Ellie Moses. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode of Noob Reviews. Stay tuned for the next one. Let me know in the comments what you want me to do next. As always, take care, God bless, and peace.